extradition. If I say that word and give a pause, you will immediately start thinking that one more difficult subject from law has come. Instead of saying that word, if I say Lalit Modi, Nirav Modi, Vijay Malya, then you will easily connect to me. What's happening with them? We being in year 2020, we all are aware that what's happening with all these people. They have committed some kind of crime in India and ran away to UK. And we are trying to bring them back to India. And that process is all about extradition. What I'm doing here, if I say little more, you will not even bother to get into the contents of this particular presentation. Hey guys, welcome to my legal classes. This is Ganesh Pujari and in my today's class, I'm going to discuss the meaning, the definitions, the procedure, the challenges and case laws pertaining to extradition. Why are we wasting time here? Let's get into the first slide. The meaning of extradition is very easy. In my image there, there are two states, one by name A, the other one by name B. And both the states have their own people who are living happily. There is one Mr. X who is living in A and he has committed some offense. That's why I have colored him in red and he is running away to B. Now the process of bringing him back to state A is all about extradition or extradition is the delivery of an accused or a convicted individual to the state on whose territory he is alleged to have committed or to have been convicted of a crime. The next question is why do we need extradition? Imagine a person commits a crime and running away to another state and if we don't have any procedure to bring him back then what happens? There will be no peace and order. People will commit crime just like that and run away to another state. On the other hand, if a person is committing a crime and running away to another state, we cannot just enter and bring him back because every state has its own competent jurisdiction and we cannot enter others jurisdiction without their prior permission. Now that's a lot of procedure. So to ensure that if a person is committing crime and running away to another state, to bring him back, there should be a process which is very clearly defined. That is what extradition all about. To ensure peace and order and to ensure that if a person has committed crime, he should be punished. There is a procedure by name extradition. As far as definition is concerned, the first and foremost definition for this particular concept is coming from Star K who says the term extradition denotes the process whereby under treaty or upon basis of reciprocity, one state surrender to another as it requests a person accused or convicted of a criminal offense committed against the laws of the requesting state. He is bringing a lot of aspects and remember all of them are very very important. First he says it is a process and then he says such process has came to existence with a treaty or upon a basis of reciprocity. And with that treaty what happens? A state surrenders to another state a person. Now because of that treaty or reciprocity, one state surrenders a person to another state who is basically accused or convicted of a criminal offense. Now such person has either accused or convicted a criminal offense and ran away to this particular state and this state is now surrendering that person back to the original state because he has done something against the laws of the requesting state. Such a beautiful definition. Then comes the definition of Ophenium who says the delivery of an accused or a convicted individual to the state on whose territory he is alleged to have committed or to have been convicted of a crime by the state on whose territory the alleged criminal happens to be for the time being. Here the only missing part is he is not mentioning how that process has come to existence. Like Starke has mentioned treaty or reciprocity, Ophenium has not mentioned that other than that he has all the other elements. The last definition that is Grotius says it is the duty of each state either to punish the criminal or to return them to the states where they have committed crime. Now he gives one more option. You can punish yourself or you can give him back to the original state. Now that is the third definition from Grotius. 
after understanding the meaning and definition few of the important aspects that you need to keep in your mind is the first and foremost point is extradition is matter of bilateral treaty without treaty you cannot have extradition and international law just like that will not give any importance to extradition the second aspect is extradition and asylum are different asylum are basically the people who have committed political crime and ran away and for them basically extradition is not applicable however if there is a murder of government leader or his family member in that case extradition can be applied now for that i have a detailed case law and explanation in my last slide i will explain it later the third important point is extradition differs to state to state based on the treaties that they have with each other now for that i will take two beautiful examples to bring back people from uk is very difficult we have almost 5500 extradition case pending with uk whereas to bring back someone who has committed crime in india and ran away to usa is quite easy because our treaty with usa is quite easy now it depends upon the kind of treaty and the different laws of the different state is also applicable when it comes to extradition that way it depends what is the kind of treaty that we have with each other when we are applying extradition and the last important aspect is extradition is not easy that you all must be aware by now with the case law of lalit modi or vijay malya or nirav modi now one beautiful case law for that is gulshan kumar's murder case where the accused was the music director nadeem who fled away to britain and due to insufficient evidence england refused to extradite nadeem to india that is one case law you can refer in your exam then comes the procedure of extradition to explain the procedure of extradition it is very very easy but when it comes to practicality this is one of the most difficult procedure i hope by reading lot of cases in the newspaper or by watching news by now you must be familiar with the procedure also one important aspect that is required before even the procedure is the treaty between these two states however remember that it is not a 100% requirement the procedure of extradition can happen even without the treaty also that is based on the state's thinking way now let's see the procedure of extradition to start the procedure of extradition the first and foremost requirement is there should be a person who has committed a crime and ran away to another state now imagine that has happened in that case the first stage comes into place where a request by the original state from where the accused or convicted has fled away will go to the second state to where he has actually fled away the second stage is once the request is received by the second state they will start searching for the accused or convicted here comes the role of treaty now if there is a treaty available then the state which has received the request will start the search for the accused or convicted if there is no treaty then the state can straight away decline such request the most important stage of extradition starts after finding the person that is accused or convicted is now been arrested and then start the third stage third stage is one of the most important and most of the time one of the slowest stage in the entire process of extradition now here what happens trial by the state jurisdiction starts that means if a person from india has ran away to uk the uk's court start the trial now uk's court will start asking for all the evidences from india and india shall provide all those evidences to the requesting state that is to uk and only on 100% satisfactory with all the evidences the last stage starts which is starting of extradition process and when it comes to uk the third stage is very very slow and that is why we are struggling with them and that is why all the indian criminals are happily running away to uk so the important challenges of extradition is extradition is not a responsibility of state as far as international law is concerned 
it completely depends upon the treaties between state that is the biggest challenge before even i get into the challenges of person or crime few other information that you need to remember is as far as india is concerned extradition is followed based on the extradition act 1962 and if you ask me is there nothing in international law there are conventions like for example european convention on extradition which happened in the year 1957 which got implemented in the year 1964 is one of the important reference and the military criminals or religious criminals are not coming under extradition just like asylum this is also been treated separately and if there are multiple countries involved in a single case then that becomes a different scenario for that the biggest example is veer savarkar's case what happened in veer savarkar ji's case he got caught by english and they were bringing him from england to india and on the way they gave a stop at french port and veer savarkar ji the freedom fighter tried to escape from the boat and one french police arrested him and gave him back to the english police now after giving back french government thought that they shouldn't have given him back to the english so they went to international court saying that they have not completed all the procedures with veer savarkar ji so they should get back veer savarkar ji however international court said that they cannot comment anything on that because it is the treaties which are deciding all these aspects but not the international law that is one of the important challenge that you need to remember when we are studying challenges there are two important headings we need to mention one on the basis of person second one on the basis of crime now when it comes to person there are three different dimensions first one imagine an indian committed a crime in uk and came back to india now if uk government asking him back to uk now that is quite difficult for india because emotionally he is our national so that becomes very difficult and there we see the doctrine of reciprocity where the indian government can trial itself and give a punishment or it can give back to uk also now the second one is if a person coming from different other state it is not very difficult for example if a person of uk has committed a crime there and coming to india now india will not have any sentiment india will definitely give that uk citizen back to uk that is very normal and the third one if there are multiple states are involved in that case it is very difficult for example if a french citizen committed a crime in uk and coming to india now there will be lot of uh, aspects coming in because there are three states involved in that case it becomes sensitive and all the treaties need to be observed then comes the crime part now to consider a person for extradition the crime should be crime in both the state where he has committed it and where he has gone both the state should treat that particular aspect as crime only then the concept of extradition comes into picture and second one the political issues or the military criminal or the religious criminals are treated in a different way that is one different aspect we need to remember and political in nature will also go and fall in asylum category unless and until there is killing of the government leader or of his family members the last aspect that we see is doctrine of double criminality that means where he has ran away there also the act that he has conducted in original state should be considered as crime only then that will be considered as crime otherwise it is not crime and for that the beautiful case law is factor versus lawn bear here in this case a person fraudulently took money in england and ran away to one of the part in usa and as for that place in usa that is illinois there this offense was not a crime at all in that case the us government declined to give him back to england because as for them whatever he has committed was not crime so based on doctrine of double criminality he was not given back to england that is one important aspect you need to remember the last part that we are studying here is political crimes and extradition remember that the political crimes are not treated in extradition and this basic philosophy came into existence from the french revolution 1789 and after that every state started adopting the same and now it is one of the important customary international law 
now how to understand one crime as a political crime if the crime has the political motive or if the crime has happened in the political circumstances or a crime happened with political direction like towards a party or organization in that case that is considered as political crime and for that there will not be extradition as far as political crimes and extradition is concerned there are two important case laws that i want to discuss with you guys the first being inre castioni case what happened here castioni was one of the swiss revolutionist and he killed a city mayor and ran away to england and england declined to extradite saying that he has done a political crime so it is not coming under extradition the second case law is inre munier what happened here i hope you guys have heard the term an atheist who is an atheist the one who doesn't believe in god is an atheist likewise there is one more concept by name anarchist anarchist means the one who doesn't believe in government manur was the one who was anarchist who was living in france and because he was not believing in government system he killed a political leader and also put a bomb which caused destroying lot of public property and then he ran away to england now here in this case england helped to extradite him because it was not a political crime this guy was not believing in government system at all and he caused all those damage because of his belief which is not actually political that is why this case was treated in a different way and they have extradited him to france one important exception for political crime is if somebody is trying to kill the foreign government leader or his family members then that is not considered as political crime and this principle comes on the basis of attempt clause which is came in the year 1854 in belgium what is attentat clause now there was one mr celestin jacquin who tried to kill the french emperor napoleon 3 while he was traveling in train and with this incident this particular clause came into existence saying that if someone is trying to kill a foreign government leader or his family members then there can be extradite possible that is one important aspect you need to remember and that is also now a customary international law and the same was observed by montevideo convention on extradition in the year 1933 i repeat extradition and asylum are different likewise extradition and expulsions are also different i am going to touch upon them in one of my future video for now i am taking off thank you so much for subscribing my channel please like share and comment my videos all the very best for whatsoever purpose you are watching my channel and thanks again